Good morning, ladies. Welcome to Tea Time Talk. It's great to be here. This morning, I have a scripture that I'd like to share with you from Isaiah 35, verse 8, which says, And a highway will be there. It will be called the way of holiness. The unclean will not journey on it. It will be for those who walk in that way. Wicked fools will not go about on it. And on the second part of verse 9, it says, But only the redeemed will walk there, and the ransomed of the Lord will return. They will enter Zion with singing. Everlasting joy will crown their heads. Gladness and joy will overtake them, and sorrow and singing will flee away. This morning I'm singing, Thank you, Lord, for saving me. Thank you, Lord, for saving me. Oh, my soul cries, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord, for saving me. I'm so grateful for his salvation. I'm so grateful for the promise. His word keeps me on the straight and narrow. It keeps me from going to the left or to the right. The way to, the, to salvation is a narrow path. And the Bible says that few will find it. And I encourage every one of you, if you haven't found that narrow path that leads to to salvation that leads to heaven that you too can know the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior I encourage you to seek out the scriptures the Holy Bible for the truth the truth for everlasting life we have a lot of things that we're going to cover this morning it is a chilly it's a chilly rainy day here in Mexico if you didn't know my name is Lori Neighbor. I am a conservative Christian, wife, mother, grandmother, and a pastor's wife. And my family and I have lived in Mexico since 2004. I have been in Whole Foods plant-based, no oil living since 2019. And it's such, it transformed me physically on the outside and it's affecting me on the inside. And I'm so excited about it. I want everybody to know we've lost too many good pastors to diseases that they shouldn't have had to die from or suffer from. And I know that goes for family and friends too. We're just losing too many people to the food that we eat. And I started this channel in hopes to send out the message because I think that Christians should be the one leading the way to, to whole foods, plant-based lifestyle living to lifestyle medicine living and the Seventh-day Adventists have done a tremendous job they they are part of the blue zones the Seventh-day Adventists that are in the in uh, Loma Linda California they're living longer than the other 10 years longer than most Americans in the United States that eat a traditional um, North American or sad American diet and we need to change that we don't need to just let uh, whatever party is gonna say hey you need to eat whole foods plant-based <clears throat> I'm just feeling that we need to lead the way because it's scriptural it's biblical eating and it's healthy and people need to know that they they don't have to die and suffer from food related sickness food related or uh, as Dr. McDougall puts it, they don't have to die from food poisoning because literally it's food poisoning that is causing these horrible diseases that our family and friends are dying from. The cancers, many, many cancers, diabetes, heart disease, arthritis, there's multiple sclerosis. Dr. McDougall, he has their testimonies there's scientific evidence and it's listed on his website. You can go to his website, go to drmcdougall.com for testimonials on how to reverse many, many diseases that are food related. I, I myself was suff have been suffering from some of those food related illnesses and I'd like to speak with you about those today. Well, I had a dream. I woke up from a bad dream yesterday morning and I'm glad I woke up. In my dream, I was fat again and I said, no, not again, I don't wanna be fat again. And 
as I woke up and was coming to my senses, I was like, no, that's not true. It wasn't true. I'm not fat again. And I'm so glad because I have, I've lost weight and I've gained it back and lose it and gain it back. And I've done that so many times. I don't want to do it anymore. I'm done. I'm done. I'm so content with this lifestyle eating. I'm going to jump into some questions. Well, I apologize for a lot of the editing that I have to do. I seem to have a stuttering problem or repeat myself or I feel like I haven't said it quite right. And it's, it's a problem that I've had my entire life. And it has made some really funny conversations, both in English and you can imagine it's equally as funny in Spanish. But now we'll carry on. Uh, Plant Plotter's Paradise asked if I could make a simple Mexican specialty meal. And bear in mind, she says, I'm assuming it's a lady, that I am not in the United States. Well, neither am I. <laughs> I'm not in the United States either. I think that uh, that will be something we definitely touch on. We're gonna have some recipes with a Mexican flair and coming up in the future. Um, <clears throat> this is from Joni. This is from Johnny on Facebook. And she said, hello, I listened to your video where you described losing 58 pounds in a year with being fruitarian and intermittent, intermittent fasting. Question, did you only eat fruit for that entire year with the intermittent, intermittent fasting? And did you fast from 6 p.m to 4 p.m. every day, just curious. Thanks for sharing. That was from, um, from Joni or Johnny. Uh, all right, when I was losing last year, I had picked up on the intermittent fasting and it was raw. It was through a guy, uh, Marcus and Kara. They do raw intermittent fasting. So I wasn't just doing fruit. The fruitarian part was for three years, from 2016, I believe, and to th 2018, 16, 18, yeah. So those three years, I was a cheating fruitarian. I did find some help uh, with detoxing. It was for detoxification, and the deeper level of detoxing came from eating fruit, fruit, berries, and melons all day, plus you use the herbs a combination of herbal formulas to help your body detox. The problem I found with that and why it wasn't sustaining for me was because around two o'clock I wasn't satiated and I started craving uh, cooked food, I wanted meat, and I just couldn't resist if my husband brought home the roadside chicken, chicken from the chicken stand on the roadside, it just killed me. I would just like, oh, I want that so bad. It, it was just, and it, it was like turning the attic light on. And so I failed many times. It was very difficult for me to, because I wasn't feeling satiated. So then I would turn to avocado or I would turn to something that had coconut in it. It was so high in fat. Well, that's why I was a big fat, big fat fruitarian, cheating fruitarian. I called myself a, I called myself a big fat cheating fruitarian because that's, because it was not a satiating diet like we find with the starch based diet. But that's all I knew and initially, so I started out with that the end of December of 2018, going into 2000, January of 2019, suddenly I came across the Blue Zones and the, the doctor that I had been listening to, well, he had said that all the people that live the longest were the raw fruitarians. So I initially did believe him, but when the studies had come out which the blue zones had been out for a while, but I hadn't seen them. Uh, then I learned that, oh, there's five to six zones in the world where the people are living the longest and the National Geographic did a study on them. They called them the blue zones because they, because they took a blue pin and circled those areas on the globe and then they went and studied how they lived and what they eat. And that was when I realized wait a minute, none of them are fruitarian. 
none of them were raw fruitarians or raw foodists. They were not, they were not eating raw. Raw food is good for you, most definitely is good for you. And, um, but I had to take into consideration that all of those zones they were eating cook, some cooked food. And I know some of those zones have eat meat and some of them have oils, but if you look at the quantity and then you can look at their health and how it's been affected by adding more animal and more oil into their diets, they're not living as long and they are starting to develop coronary heart disease and other types of diseases by adding more of those animal and oils back or into their diets that they didn't have before. So those, that spoke to me quite loud and clear. But, bef but what happened is I was wanting to lose weight. I was really wanting to lose weight. And when I started eating, cooked and adding back in legumes and other vegetables, I wasn't losing weight. So there, the month, I think in the month of February, I didn't lose anything. And I was looking for a way of losing weight that would be healthy. And I came across um, Marcus and Kara, or Kara, and they eat raw. And then I watched his videos and they were very convincing. And I was looking at them as examples and they're, you know, my age or older and they look amazing so i was taking into consideration what he was saying and he really encouraged the intermittent fasting and taking it up a step by fasting until four o'clock and i get and he said stop eating by six o'clock and explained why so i was then i was then fasting until four o'clock and the weight was falling off at that time, I was eating raw food. I was just eating raw and I felt really good. I wasn't having, I wasn't hangry. I was eating sufficient food. I was getting the nutrition that I need. That was a big thing is that I wasn't getting the new, I don't know that I was getting all the right nutrition. I wasn't balanced. I was having trouble with my gut flora. So I, and the other thing is, is that I was putting seeds on my salad. Whereas when I was fruitarian, I wasn't using seeds, not a whole lot. And when I started intermittent fasting, I started putting some seeds on my salad. Well, those seeds produce hormones that our body needs. And I felt really good. And I did that for a few months and then I wasn't, um, I mean, I was pretty much steadily losing, but I just got turned on to, Chef AJ is, AJ is also very, very thin. And listen to what she had to say. She went to True North up in Santa Rosa, California, where Dr. McDougal's clinic is at. And I started listening to Dr. McDougal and lo and behold, he has, he has so much research, decades of research scientific evidence, clinical studies that he did, that was the most convincing, most convincing. So now I can even go back and listen to Marcus briefly and think, okay, there was a lot of truth in what he was saying, but I don't believe everything that he was saying. I, I do, I've learned a lot as the process has um, taken place I've picked up things from the fruitarian doctor. I picked up things from Marcus. I picked up things from the blue zones, picked up things from from Dr. McDougal, but Dr. McDougal has so much history and he's he has so many testimonials, people giving testimony of the horrible diseases that they've reversed by eating the, the McDougal program. And um, that's, that's the most convincing to me. Abby Lewis says, does your hubby or anyone else in your family eat this way? My family right now in my home is my 10 year old daughter and my husband. And if I make them food that they like, 
it, even it can be plant, whole food plant based they'll eat it my it, it's I don't have them completely a hundred percent on board yet I'm hoping I will honey <laughs> some sometimes he listens to my videos so uh, I'm hoping you know I, it's not it's not that I want them to never ever have an animal you know eat an animal product or have a treat but as dr campbell proved in the china study is that it needs to be confined to only five percent of our diet because if we have any genes or genetic makeup towards turning on cancers we're looking at that five percent we could be turning them on and if you don't want to be turning them on don't do it you know back off five percent or less and we should be all right let's see here i do find myself eating too much starch compared to the amount of greens or too many cherry tomatoes or more than two tangerines maybe this is proving to be more of a spiritual issue than i imagine that's from my sweet cousin ruthie and she is just she is kicking it kicking butt <laughs> she's lost 16 pounds so far in a few weeks and ruthie i want you to know that uh, dr mcdougall encourage you encourages you to have six pieces of fruit a day so having two tangerines is okay you know i put some tangerines out here it's having it in in its whole form where you're having the fiber in there because then it causes the insulin not to spike up so high. You're getting the fiber and you're digesting, you're, you're burning calories by having that fiber included in the fruit. Um, and you were concerned about having too much starch compared to the greens. Basically, Dr. McDougall says that we should be eating a diet that's 90 70 to 90 percent starch if you're wanting to lose weight and lose weight quickly that's when you back off and you're eating half of your diet 50 percent of your diet being starch so don't be too hard on yourself if your body is wanting that nutrition from the starch because you haven't you you weren't eating um, a whole you weren't eating a diet that was really nutritious or nutritious enough for you, then your body's asking for the starch. Once you get with the what you need from the starches, then you'll start kind of, your body will start adapting and you'll crave less. You'll have less cravings because you're getting the nutrition that it needs. The gut flora is getting balanced. This diet has been tremendous for me regarding candida. I personally think that most overweight people have a candida issue where their candida flora has gotten out of hand and it controls us. It controls a lot of our cravings and uh, the things that we that it wants. So and it wants the refined sugars, the processed foods. So I even have a my nails have those bow lines, I guess what you call them, where, and I have one on my big toe that's quite deep. It's pretty much indicates when I started eating the starch-based diet, and as it was growing out, the nail is so much healthier. I had a terrible candida problem, but praise the Lord, I took blood work and I don't have a candida problem anymore. And I praise the Lord for that. And I really believe it's from this diet. It's just balanced. It's helped balance out my gut flora, which is a great thing. Um, let me jump back to intermittent fasting because intermittent fasting increases the HGH hormone which is the human growth hormones and it keeps you young and losing weight it increases 1300 percent in women that do intermittent fasting will increase that hormone 1300 percent in women and 2000 percent in men 
<clears throat> the HD, HGH decreases food cravings. And dopamine is a hormone that's produced from certain foods. So like the white sugar or the white flour could be from meat, could be from oils, gives that dopamine high processed foods. That's how they control people to keep going back and buying certain foods. Well, that makes me mad because I don't want to be controlled by other people. So that makes me pretty angry. That's one of the, that's one of the ways, well, that was the main reason why I overcame being a bulimic was when I realized that the enemy wanted me dead and I was killing myself by doing it. I was so angry because I knew I couldn't uh, accomplish the plan and purpose that God had for my life living like that. And it made me so mad. That was it. It was like, you're not going to control me. And I think that's the attitude we have to have. You, you have to decide in your mind, who's going to control you? You're going to let that control you? It's your choice. It's basically who's going to be your master. Are you going to allow the Holy Spirit to be your master? You're going to, you're given the, the ability to choose and we're going to do whatever it is that we're going to do. We're going to create habits. So in my mind, I think, who do I want to be? How do I want to live? How do I want to live each day? day of my life. When I wake up in the morning, what's the first thing that I want to do? Well, the first thing I want to do is spend time with the Lord and I want to go for a walk. Those are the, th these are habits where we are creatures of repetition, of rhythm, of habits. We do the same things over and over and over again. So just, I feel like just decide who do you want to be and do it. Be, become that person. So if you get mad at the food, <laughs> you've got to just realize that those things that you think, well, I want the fried food. It smells so good. You know, there's alternatives to fried food. You can bake it. Bake it with no oil. There's ways to put, you know, if it's a, a breadcrumb and then it's fried, well, you could use a cornmeal. You could use oats, you can use barley. I mean, there's other grains that, that can be ground up into flours. Chickpeas or garbanzo beans can be ground up into flours if you can't tolerate whole wheat. And there's just different things that we can do. When you think about the small amount of bread that's going to be on a, you know, whatever it is that you're going to put into the, the oven that's similar to a fried food, because there's just a lot of recipes. There's a lot of recipes we need to get into. Someone came up or on another site that I was on and it was something that looked like they were chickpea nuggets. And I thought, I'm gonna try that. It just looked like, it, it's gonna be nutritious for one, but it's baked and then they're, you know, finger food. It looks, it looked good, it looked appealing. So we'll probably try that. You know, there's just many things we just haven't discovered yet. And, and we have to remember for example, when we moved to Mexico and we were taken to the big market in Guadalajara and a friend of ours said, here, I'll buy you something. We went to the seafood area and I was being served, uh, oh, let me see if I can think in English. We were, <laughs> it was a cocktail of pulpo, which is octopus. And when I initially saw that octopus and those tentacles on it, those little round tentacles, Oh, you know, that looked disgusting. But it, I quickly told myself, wait a minute, Lori, you weren't raised on octopus, but you were raised eating shrimp. Now, if there were shrimp in there and it looked normal, looked familiar, I wouldn't have had a problem with it. But looking at that octopus looked scary and I didn't know what it was going to taste like. And then I ended up loving it. Of course, the octopus is really high in cholesterol, so I don't, and I don't need to have high cholesterol, so I don't eat it, but that doesn't mean I would never eat it, never ever again in my life, no. But at this point in time, I'm still trying to heal my gut flora, so I just have no desire to have, to have octopus. 
but when we try new foods, and I know Ruthie, you've been excellent as far as an example of just being a trooper. You know, Ruthie, she's, I don't think she'd mind if I say she's in her mid seventies and she is just, she's dropping the weight. She's beating all the young gals in our, <laughs> in our little group. You know, what a great example you are, Ruthie. I really appreciate you and, you know, nobody knows you, but except for me and maybe the other family members in our group, but Ruthie cured breast cancer naturally many, many years ago. So um, I'm just really thrilled that she's, um, she's doing the McDougal program with us. Um, let me see here, let me get on here. We need to, some people are wondering about, you know, losing weight, they're feeling like um, they're kind of stuck. Stress creates cortisol and that's the, the death hormone which creates fat. So you really need to watch your stress levels and um, you know, ask the Lord to help you to calm down, to stay peaceful, to be in that peaceful place where your, you know, your peace isn't being robbed. Uh, and it makes a big difference. If you don't get proper sleep, you're going to gain weight because a rundown body is a stressed out body full of cortisol. It really does make a big difference. I mean, I was, I, I could almost guarantee if I needed to lose a little bit of weight, if I'm done eating by six o'clock, I'm laying in bed at nine, resting, and I'm sleeping, and I get a good night's sleep, I'm gonna get on the scale in the morning, I'm gonna have lost a pound. It, it just was almost predictable. It was, it was crazy how the weight just fell off when I needed to lose more weight, when I was heavier. When we get closer to our more ideal weight, well, then the weight loss is going to slow down. Um, so it's important to stop eating. This was great advice that I did get from Marcus with a K. Uh, he said to stop eating three to four hours before bed because 70% of your body's energy goes into digestion. So don't make your body work while you should be resting and late night snacks are shortening your life and making you fat. Go to bed by nine or 10 and no later than 11 p.m. And though that right there is still something I struggle with. <laughs> I was not in bed until one o'clock last night. That is not something I normally do, but it does happen on occasion. So I don't know if it's just because my body needs less sleep or if it's because I took kelp capsules late in the afternoon. Sometimes I sabotage myself by what I do. If my husband comes home in the afternoon and he says, can you make some of that hot chocolate? And then I'm eating or drinking hot chocolate at four or five in the afternoon, well, of course I'm gonna be awake until midnight. So I, I mean, I did that to myself. So I have to remember, don't take those kelp capsules in the, in the afternoon. I only take them twice a week for iodine to help the, you know, support your thyroid. Um, drink plenty of water. Now the body signals thirst and hunger in the same way and it doesn't know the difference. So make sure that you're drinking your water. I like to drink my quart of water before I eat. And that was one way that helped with intermittent fasting was that I was drinking the water and it took the hunger away and I was able to easily make it until four o'clock. And then normally my body in the rhythm that I have had been in, boy, four o'clock came out. That was my nap time and I hated that because I, all through my 40s at four o'clock I wanted to take a nap <laughs> just seems so ridiculous my my the rhythm that I was in um, so there's different levels of intermittent fasting if you're really having trouble losing weight and I'm kind of talking to my friend Jennifer I really want to encourage you to try a little bit of intermittent fasting try waiting until noon if you wait until noon to eat anyway maybe try waiting until two o'clock and then make yourself stop at six or seven o'clock it really makes a big difference if you're if you're eating the way that you're supposed to be eating the, the you know the way the mcdougall program indicates it does work and i've heard dr lyle in an interview say when he he's up at true north he said when people say i'm not losing weight i'm not losing weight he said guaranteed 
they are sneaking things into the diet program that is not com compliant, compromising their progress. So look for any, any type of fats, extra fats that could be sneaking in nuts, too many nuts. Um, I don't even eat nuts at this point in time. Well, I don't eat nuts if I'm trying to lose. Um, so it, even a teaspoon of peanut butter can stop my weight loss. One of my favorite restaurants to eat here locally is called Chopsticks and she makes a great, it's a vegetarian bowl with uh, their noodles, the oriental noodles and it's a salad and it has some lightly fried uh, tofu which they use no oil when they make it for me. But she has this peanut butter soy sauce, ugh. And one day Betty and I figured out how much peanut butter was actually in the amount of sauce that they were serving with that salad. It was a tablespoon. Oh, it's so good. I just want a whole bowl of it, but I'm not going to lose weight if I am, if I'm, you know, dousing that salad in that delicious peanut butter soy sauce. It is really good. So look for ways that fat is sne sneaking into your diet. I don't notice that um, the table, the two tablespoons of seeds that I use for seed cycling to balance out my hormones affect my weight loss. And it may in fact help because I'm balancing those hormones. When you think about it, when you've removed all processed foods, you've removed you've removed all those estrogens and those other hormones that you don't want. Our body needs some hormones. <laughs> it needs some help producing hormones. So I, but I'm really low in estrogen. So I need those seeds. I need the flax seed. And I feel better when I have those seeds. So check those out. Gals, if you're wanting to know what kind of food to make, if all else fails, make a soup. I never mentioned that in my videos, but I eat a lot. I, I eat a lot of soup. I love soup. Soup is so easy to make. And I realize that some people aren't big soup eaters, but I'm a really big soup eater. Make a good veggie soup. Use add, and add hot sauce. It's so good to have, add hot sauce. If you can't take the heat from hot sauce, Sandy, then I would be eating a lot of mashed potatoes and that mushroom gravy, that mommy's mushroom gravy. I would be eating a lot of veggie soups. I'd be having a lot of baked potatoes and some marinara sauce that has no spicy, spices in it that would bother my stomach. I would have be eating a lot of squashes. So hopefully that helps you, you could bake your squash, because you up there you have a lot more variety in squashes than I have down here. Um, so this diet does work for, for candida growth issues. I think I kind of touched on that. The other thing I wanted to touch on, I think I'm running out of time. I've gone way over today. So I didn't even get to some of my goodies over here, but oh, maybe I did. So you all have a fabulous day and we will talk next week. We're going to touch about osteoarthritis and neuropathy. Some other, some health issues we'll touch on next week. God bless you. Keep serving him and letting your light shine brightly. The world needs it. Love you. The thing I forgot to mention uh, regarding the hot sauce was to also consider balsamic vinegars. This one is by California Balsamic. It's called Smoked Hickory Balsamic. Look for balsamic vinegars that can flavor your food. Some of you are having trouble finding ways to put sauces or flavor your food. So check out this company. It's highly recommended by the Esselstyns and by Chef AJ. It's called Bal California Balsamic. So look into that, look into those balsamic vinegars to see if you can't flavor your food. You can also put these small bottles in your purse and when you eat out, if you get vegetables eating out, could be very helpful. Don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe, please.